The other day, I was chewing a delicious spinach salad, and suddenly I found myself chewing sand. Oh oh, what shall I do? Shall I keep chewing or spit it out? I always tell friends that I eat whatever is given to me. This food came with sand. While chewing, I thought. Eating a little bit of sand may not hurt, but then I had a second bite, and again I chewed on sand. Now what? In terms of non-duality, are not sand and spinach one? Is mind, is my mind creating a separation that spinach is food, but sand is not good for me? This is easy. I can simply stop eating spinach, and eat something else. The difficult part is: should I tell the friend who made and offered me the spinach dish, or should I just forget about it? What if my friend brings me another spinach dish? Dear friends, welcome to the world of duality, and the practice of discernment. The concept of non-duality and duality is closely related to the threefold practice. The threefold practice is cultivating equanimity, cultivating wise discernment, cultivating mindful choice in action. Equanimity, discernment, and choice in action. When we experience non-duality during meditation. We abide in the source of equanimity. We recharge our mind. This is the first of the threefold practices. From non-duality meditation, we emerge into the everyday world of duality. In the everyday world of duality, the remaining two principles, cultivating wise discernment and mindful choice in action. Are essential for survival and harmony. So about that spinach dish, without thinking too much, I concluded that I would keep my mouth shut about the sand. If Reverend Ziyang had prepared this dish, I would tell her that I was chewing sand, but I would not say this to the friend who brought the salad. Why not? Because I have a different relationship with. These two individuals, so I respond differently. Besides, the friend offers food only once in a while, and her intention is pure, kind, and loving. This is discernment. In my talk two weeks ago, we explored how our dividing and analyzing mind can limit us from seeing the full picture. Of our interconnectedness, oneness. However, duality also offers richness and variety by presenting us with countless opportunities to practice discernment. In this dualistic world, we face the constant dilemma of choosing the most mindful ways to respond to everyday situations. If we stay only in the realm of non-duality, we may not cultivate the mind of proper discernment. We may not perceive the truth and consequences of cause and effect. We might disregard precepts and guidelines for maintaining appropriate boundaries and developing ethical behavior. A clear understanding of cause and effect through mindful speech, thoughts, and actions can change the quality of our lives. Therefore, the Dharma of duality is a powerful practice for navigating everyday life without hitting guardrails. As for exercising good judgment, how do we know? If we are on the right track, by checking 
how well we use our six senses. The six senses are sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch, and perception. These can be consolidated into three basic categories: speech, thought, and action. This is also expressed as mindful choice in action. Mindful choice in action. Mindful choice in action is directly related karma building. Dear friends, what karma are you creating today through your thoughts, speech, and actions? Recently, we received a no- notice from the tax office. The notice looked scary with lots of red letters saying "unpaid and past due property tax." My first response was, "Oh no, what's going on?" My heart skipped a bit. In response to this sensory condition, my calm mind was stirred, wondering why we had received this when we had already paid our tax. So I immediately pressed the key to make a phone call to the tax office. As you know, this kind of phone call is not pleasant. Sometimes I can maintain a calm mind, but this time I felt confused and stressed. I don't exactly remember my tone of voice as I explained our situation. I don't think I yelled or even raised my voice, but I don't think my tone was. Sweet, either. Later, another person in the county tax office called. She talked fast in a tense voice, telling me what I should do about the tax money that was not delivered. After I hung up the phone, I realized how much stress and tension the people in the tax office must receive from each phone call. I felt sorry for them, and I also wondered whether I should have maintained a more calm and loving tone of voice when I first called them. Every day we deal with a thousand different issues and trying situations. The dualistic aspects of reality often bring distress and necessitate judgment. But distress and judgment can be viewed as opportunities for grace, fullness, and the adventure of life. The unpleasant side of duality allows us to have a complete understanding and experience of our existence in this world. These days. I experience the beauty of duality in the temple kitchen. In order to get acquainted with our kitchen, our new Reverend Si Young spent two full days reorganizing the food in our freezer and refrigerator. She created sections and labels for every category of food, such as vegetables. Pickled food, seafood, soybean paste. Before she did this, whenever I opened the fridge, everything looked like one thing: food. Now, instead of seeing just one big thing, I see many different things. Delightful duality. It is so clear where everything is now. This saves me time, energy, food, and the peace of mind. Yesterday, looking for food for thought, I opened the freezer door. I reached for chocolate and contemplated the truth of Il Wan Sang. Wow! Can you believe it? Chocolate, a path to Il Wan Sang. This passage from the Truth of Ilwan Song describes the Dharma of Duality. 
Through the light of the void and calm, luminous awareness, the discrimination regarding great and small, being and non-being appears. Whereupon the distinction between wholesome and unwholesome karmic consequences comes into being. Language, names, and signs also become obvious. Thus, the triple words in the ten directions appear like a jewel in hand. Clear, obvious distinction appears like a jewel in hand. This passage invites us to appreciate the uniqueness of every different manifestation of life. This guides us to trust in our bright wisdom and the power of our discernment. As for incorporating both non-duality and duality into daily life, here is the key phrase from the chapter, Timeless Meditation. Take true voidness as the substance and take marvelous existence as the function. What does it mean to take marvelous existence as the function? Marvelous existence. Master Sote San uses the word marvelous when he describes the dualistic transient world. Have you ever watched a sunset and thought, we never ever have the exact same sunset? Marvelous sunset. Marvelous realm of mind and body. Marvelous world of diversity and impermanence. What does function mean here? Function means utilizing our six senses calmly and mindfully. Function means transforming true voidness into loving, kind use of our six senses. The dharma of duality and non-duality is inseparable. When our minds and hearts become permeated by the truth of non-duality, our every action creates wholesome karma in this dynamic, marvelous world. Master Sote San said, the creative transformations of true voidness and marvelous existence freely conceal and reveal themselves through all things in the universe. The creative transformations of a true voidness and marvelous existence freely conceal and reveal themselves through all things in the universe for eons. Concealing and revealing are two aspects of truth. Concealing non-duality, revealing duality. In conclusion, the dharma of duality is possible only through the dharma of non-duality. They are mutually grounded in one another, just like each aspect of the threefold practice strengthens the others, equanimity, wise discernment, and mindful choice in action. We can nourish the infinite spaciousness of a true voidness through meditation and by dwelling in our true nature. Our clear and wise discernment is the glorious outcome of this practice. We become masters of duality. Existence itself is joy. How marvelous it is to live in this phenomenal world. Will you join me in taking non-duality as our foundation and delight in the limitless possibilities of marvelous existence?